I'm Al McFarland. Welcome to Conversations with Al McFarland. And you know, it's all about the neighborhood. This is a conversation about how we build our community, our neighborhood, house by house, family by family. We're focusing on business creation, business development, economic development, and culture. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. I'm Al McFarland. Welcome back to Conversations with Al McFarland. We're going to continue sort of taking a deep dive into the question of abuse and neglect. Uh, and the question is how that plays up in different people's experiences and how these individual experiences play out into a statement about the culture and about the world. How do we come through uh, being uh, abused, being victimized, or being ignored, being uh, marginalized. And uh, this is gonna be an unusual conversation because I have great experts, <laughs> uh, great voices, great minds, uh, telling stories and explaining uh, the nuance of what it means, what it feels like, and how we interpret uh, sometimes these difficult to interpret experiences that we have. Uh, I recently connected with uh, a friend from way back who uh, reconnected with me, uh, Colonel David Rabb. He is a uh, colonel in the U.S. Army Reserve, and uh, he was the commander of the 113th Medical Detachment, a combat stress control group located in Garden Grove, California. He's a licensed social worker and an accredited social, accredited AC Social worker. social worker, what's the ACSW stand for? Uh, Accredited Certified Social Worker, that's it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, talk about his experience as uh, supporting military personnel in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, my friend and, and colleague, Resma Menachem has come back again, also a licensed social worker uh, and uh, an expert who's been on the Oprah Winfrey Show and on Dr. Phil talking about conflict and violence. He served as a director of counseling services for the Tubman Family Alliance and as a behavioral health director for African American Family Services in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. He also is the author of a very popular book called My Grandmother's Hands. And finally, uh, I call her the queen. Uh, Dr. Braveda Akinsanya is a licensed clinical psychologist with over 30 years of experience. She's written and presented and consulted extensively on diversity, developmental psychology, multiculturalism, on severe psychopathology, childhood abuse, trauma, sexual assault, community, domestic violence, African-American mental health. And so this is about all of that today. And uh, what I've said is uh, my brother Wayne is standing by because I'm expecting this to be a conversation yeah. that turns spiritual. Mm -hmm. mm. And we're going to invite the spirit Absolutely. to invade mm -hmm. and support and lift this conversation. Mm -hmm. This is about healing mm -hmm. and it's about telling the story. Mm -hmm. We have much to say. Mm -hmm. And if we don't say it, it won't be said. That's, right. and that's the truth of the matter. That's so right. let me start by uh, asking brother Colonel David Rabb to talk about how you introduced me to the concept, I hadn't heard it before, but it intrigued me, the concept of moral yes. injury. Mm. What does it mean? <sighs> moral injury, uh, it's, uh, it's something that, uh, it's really hard to say, but it is a soul. We talk about the soul. It is a injury to the soul, mm. Mm. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, moral injury from my knowledge is uh, something that, um, and usually it's values mm -hmm. based. Uh, it's something that pierces the, the, uh, the core of who you are based on uh, moral values what is right, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when something happens that goes 
way, way outside the value system, uh, you can have a wound, yeah. a deep wound yeah. uh, to the soul. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot to start off, uh, Colonel Reb, by thanking you for your service. Yes. Ah. That's number one. I yeah, want to good. acknowledge Absolutely. you and thank you for your desire, your willingness, and you placing your life and your career and everything uh, at risk for the service of our country. So I want to acknowledge that yes. and thank you thank for you it. For and I want to say that in a way that encourages other black families and families of people of color to know that as we exercise our responsibility, our yeah. duty to our country, right. it's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you deserve praise. Yes. And we applaud you for doing that. So yes. I want to say that to you. Yeah. Well, I, you know, uh, let's go direct. Uh, I think, I believe, in my spirit that uh, the God is, God is good. <laughs> and, uh, and when you're in a foxhole, That's you right. know, That's somewhere right. in, uh, from South Korea, you know, uh, you know to uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever, you know, right. uh, prayer is, a, is, a, is something that you get close to, That's right. That's right. you know? Uh, right. if, you, uh, uh, if you're like me, who uh, have, uh, I'm very, aware that God uh, has played a major uh, a role in my life. I, 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 okay, let's, let's start with the beginning. And the beginning, and I'll put it in a real tight uh, nutshell here, is that uh, I'm from Chicago. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, but I came through the era of yeah. uh, the 1960s, uh, um, and actually, and this is something I never shared with you, but I'm sharing with you since we've been, you know, up front, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> uh, you know, I went to jail when I was eight years old. Yeah. I was uh, in a prison cell when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, the, and this was like my first moral injury. So we talk about moral injury, military and all this and whatever, you know, but there are many types of moral injury. But my, my moral injury came from uh, going to jail at the age of eight for something that I didn't do. Mm. You know, uh, in the small community that I lived in, they were looking for somebody to uh, to arrest. And uh, I was young, gifted, and black. And the issue uh, was that I was available. Mm. I was available. So they they uh, mm. they came after me because they couldn't catch the people in my who who did it. And so uh, at the age of eight, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a, uh, like a little dungeon. Uh, back then, you could do that. They didn't have this JC, you know, you know justice back then. And, uh, and so, uh, I mean, I'm in, you know, they fingerprinted me. They, uh, you know, they uh, booked me and the process, and they put me in a cell. Dark and, you know, and I'm eight at years eight. old. At eight years old. But God is good because literally that was the best thing that happened to me because from there I learned at a very, very young age that I couldn't trust the system. Mm -hmm. Right? I could not trust. I could not mm. trust the system. Mm. And most of the people mm. that I went, that grew up with didn't have this experience, mm -hmm. right? And I had at a very young age this awareness that the system is sometimes not right, mm -hmm. right? My mama used to say, there are good people everywhere. Your job is to find them. Mm -hmm. And there are good people. We just need to you know, find them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're out there. Mm -hmm of all colors, of all mm -hmm. races, of all mm -hmm. genders, mm -hmm. sexuality, they're out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're good people. Mm -hmm. And we need to focus on, 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 on the good people, because there's, there's bad, mm -hmm. we know. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and every community has some bad. Uh, but uh, I'm going to say that I, I was able to ride the wave into success. And I say success only that uh, I know whose I am <laughs> and whose I am, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, in my life, God has created uh, many uh, opportunities for me. Uh, to uh, be me, do me, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and help others on the way. Yeah. And uh, if I didn't have that experience at uh, age eight, I wouldn't be me. And so that plays out now in your adulthood and the challenge that you experience with your superiors or mm. a superior yeah. out of which this conversation began. That's right. And right. you provided me with a tape of some mm. of the proceedings exactly. in which you and your attorney mm -hmm. uh, argued successfully mm -hmm. that your command mm -hmm. failed you mm -hmm. and that you charged was mm -hmm. a moral injury. It was a moral was injury. Intrigued. Talk about that for a second. Okay. So I want to bring in okay. uh, our colleagues as well in okay. the conversation. Uh, so the issue is, uh, you know, uh, I uh, was a good soldier. I am a veteran now, but... I was, I, was, I was a good soldier. That's right. I mean, I went in the Marine Corps when I was 17. Wow. And, uh, and I got promoted like boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on Super Squad. They call Super Squad the best Marines in the whole, you know, uh, battalion. And, uh, and I was selected out of, you know, the battalion uh, to be uh, represent. There was only 12 of us out of the battalion. And uh, so um, at a very young age, uh, I, I uh, was shaped by the military, which was a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, military is a great thing, mm -hmm. you know, for many people who don't, don't have opportunities, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it's a good start. And uh, mm -hmm. also you can, you know, have some space to mm -hmm. become who God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with the uh, moral injury, you know, I'm, I'm uh, already been through the ranks and, uh, you went I, from enlisted. I was I was an enlisted then soldier. You came out and you went to the National Guard, I, right? Uh, or the reserve. The reserves. Yeah. And you, and you became an officer. I became an officer. Wow. Right. And uh, uh, actually, and you rose in the ranks. I rose through the ranks. <laughs> to, to actually, a <laughs> to Fort, yeah. Fort, a lot of rising. Fort uh, um, uh, here in Minnesota, Snelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went through Fort Snelling, mm -hmm. and uh, I started off as a sergeant. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and and then I rose to the ranks of. Uh, by the time I got out, was lieutenant colonel, mm -hmm. and uh, and again, uh, I got to give credit to the military because uh, every leg of the way um, there was opportunities, uh, and at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, I knew what right looked like. Mm -hmm. And so, where was the wrong? Let's the wrong was. Uh, Okay, so I'm in, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I've done my Marine Corps experience, uh, went to Iraq, Afghanistan, um, and then it was coming back home. You know, uh, sometimes taking off is great, but coming home, landing right. can be a very difficult time. Hmm. And uh, out there in the world, uh, veterans daily are, you know, having uh, a rough of it uh, in terms of uh, adjusting. Anyhow, I came back, uh, and um, shortly after I came back from war, um, because I was doing so much, so much, so much, I stressed, I had a lot of stress I was carrying. Mm -hmm. And so I had a, uh, a, a, a stroke. While I'm in uniform, you know, I had a stroke. I was doing, I believe I was doing, there's another term called, Hiroshi, we'll talk about later, but it's a lot of stress, dealing with a lot of stress. Anyway, so what happened was uh, I uh, decided, uh, not, not decided, you know, God decided this. Uh, you know, I was working, working, working. Uh, if I didn't have the stroke, I would have died yes. from the work that yes. I was doing. Yes. Uh, so, you know, again, we're looking at the positive spin, um, the the stroke stopped me. God stopped me. Mm -hmm. 
got my attention, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Sure did. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then the story continues where um, I'm in the hospital laid out, right? I, I can't talk, can't walk, and I'm paralyzed. And uh, my wife is, uh, 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 you know, she, she, I had the stroke in, in front of her, mm -hmm. so it freaked her out. Um, but as I uh, was recovering, again, I'm in, on military, I'm in uniform. Uh, they said that, uh, that uh, I had intentionally caused my own stroke. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what they told my wife. That I had intentionally created conditions yes, to cause my own stroke. Yes, and um, that freaked her out. So y'all need to interview her sometime yes, <laughs> because yes, of the stress absolutely. that the family, because she had to, she, she had to fend, and I'm unconscious, I'm, right. I'm out, That's right. you know? That's right. uh, and so um, what happened was uh, she did the best and she did a great job and she was able to get uh, JAG attorneys That's and right. to represent mm -hmm. and, and fight the fight while, again, I'm out, right? right? Wow. And uh, uh, she, she, she was able to, you know, say, no, this is my husband. That's you know, right. did you, you know, uh-uh, you right. don't know, what? Yeah. She, she, but she went through that, but then she had to struggle and she struggled to the point where she got an attorney and a military attorney and they, uh, anyway, the bottom line was that uh, I was I was I was out. You know, I mean, consciously I couldn't talk, walk, speak. I couldn't. You know, I was out. Mm -hmm. And uh, then what happened was uh, my wife uh, Kim. She she had to tell me what happened. Right. But she 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 uh, she uh, she. The only reason she told me was because we had to. They had to sign papers. Uh, to uh, for the military uh, and to get me care and et cetera. And so what happened was uh, once I learned about what happened, I couldn't process it. Yes. You know, I'm like, what? what are you talking about? Could, yes. You know, what are you talking about? Yes. I couldn't, you know, look, right. I couldn't. And uh, it took me a long, you know, it took me like I couldn't process it. Mm -hmm. It's like, what in the hell over? You know, I'm, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a grunt. That's right. You know, I'm a 0311. That's right. I'm a Marine. I'm in the Army, but I'm a Marine from, you know, y'all, what? You know, so it was kind of hard. It was kind of hard for me. Uh, we got we to gotta break in a second. Right. We got to okay. take a break. Yeah. And uh, but so at uh, 30 seconds, just to, mm -hmm. so the, the point here uh, mm -hmm. is that I wanted to share is that you prevailed in presenting. Yes. Your mm -hmm. argument that you were injured. That's correct. So what happened was I, uh, uh, I appealed. Mm -hmm. I was right. turned down the first time, uh, but, you know, I appealed again. That's I appealed right. and gave them additional information, you know, and they were saying, well, we, we never heard of moral injury. What is that? We, you, you know, what? And then uh, I appealed again, and they turned it down. So it was three times. And then, you know, uh, they were forced to say, well, you know, we need to take this to the highest level, which is, uh, it's, it's called Council of Colonels. That's right, that's right. The Council wow. of Colonels, yeah. which means that there's only colonels that's right. all in this room, and we're talking. And anyway, so long and short of it is, uh, um, thank God to my attorney, mm -hmm. uh, who did a, a great job. Um, I, have to say she was African-American and brilliant. Thank God for, uh, for her. And then uh, uh, I brought my, you know, uh, uh, expert witness mm -hmm. who is a person by the name of Dr. Joseph Bobro. And uh, he knew me prior to the stroke and all this other stuff. And he uh, advocated for me. And then my secret weapon was, and they didn't see this, I brought my wife exactly to testify mm -hmm. and, and her experience of what was. And, uh, and then eventually I, you know, the board met and, and then. They agreed with you? Well, no, I had to testify. Right, right. 
Mm -hmm. Listen, okay. I'm, I'm out of time for right yeah, now. I'm sorry. Yeah. This sorry. is a fascinating <laughs> story. I want to thank you. I'm Al McFarland. We'll come back and finish this conversation. I want to bring in my experts and talk about how this story also is a reflection of our experience as a culture, about whether we are believed or not, and what the cost of disbelief or challenging our sense, our version, our story is to us as a people and to the nation. Stay tuned. I'm a voodoo child Lord knows I'm a voodoo child Well, I'm a voodoo child Lord knows I'm a voodoo child make me an island. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. I'm Al McFarland. Welcome back to Conversations with Al McFarland. My guest, Colonel David Rabb, uh, U.S. Army retired, Army reserved. He was the commander of the 113th Medical Detachment, a combat stress control unit based out of Garden Grove, California, he recounted this powerful story about uh, his experience and a stroke he suffered and the challenge uh, to his um, uh, experience, whether it was being believed or not. And that he introduced to me uh, was his description of what he was experiencing as moral injury. He said moral injury is injury to the soul. And this wasn't the first time you described the same experience when you were a child. Mm -hmm. At eight years old, you were arrested and jailed. I wanted to bring in our other guests, Resma McNockham and Dr. Braveda Akinsanya. Resma, I know you're listening with intensity yeah. because you've got, uh, you were in Afghanistan when he was in Afghanistan. Yeah. Yeah. You were working with U.S. contractors right. doing the same work he That's was right. doing mm -hmm. with military soldiers. Right. And right. so, you know, when you hear this, uh, what, what comes to your mind? Let me, let me tell you, what you think about it, I, I'm interested in not only understanding this story, but putting this story as a lens through which we examine our experience as human beings, as a people yeah. inside this culture. Yeah. Right. The ma'afa yeah. yes, is sir. the concept. Right, right, right. So first off, I just want to I, I want to acknowledge and say, you know, may the ancestors guide what I say and what we say to each other. Um, you know, I'm I'm listening to my brother say this piece, and I, I keep I keep holding my heart to kind of give some support to it because um, the idea that um, that he was in a position where he gave everything everything to this endeavor. He gave himself, he gave his spirit, he gave his soul, he gave his body. And the fact that that went unrecognized and that he had to fight even to be recognized as a human being um, really reinforces for me this, 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 this thing that this is not just about um, something that happens to us as an individual. There's a systemic quality to this. And that, you know, as he said earlier about being eight years old and being arrested because he was available. Our people have a long history of being available. Um, it is a relatively new occurrence that the black body has had dominion over itself. Now think about that. That for most of our history, the white body has had unfettered access to the black body in terms of labor, in terms of sex, mm -hmm. in terms of care, in terms of whatever, whatever you want to put on it, the black body recently has had dominion over itself. And so when I listen to my brother who, who um, when I'm listening to him talk about that experience and then I know what Afghanistan was like, I know what the heat was like. I know the smell of the poop ponds on, on, oh. on, 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 on calf. Mm. And you get used to it. 
Mm. You get used to the smell mm. and, the, and the sound of the rockets going mm. You get used to it. Mm. And then you come back here and you're totally disoriented. Mm -hmm. you, your, your, your body is so oriented to that, you want to go back. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and when I'm listening to him, I had to choke back because I remember landing here, coming back here after two years over there, and, and landing here um, and not wanting to be here and wanting to, and figuring out some type of way to go, trying to figure out some type of scheme to go back. And that, and thinking I was crazy hmm. and thinking that I was, uh, and, and being rageful when I never had rage. You know, all, all of this stuff and then having, and then listening to this brother, uh, having to fight to be taken care of, mm -hmm. to, ha to knowing that his wife, what his wife had to do while he was out, and that should never have happened. And so, um, brother, I just, you know, um, you know, I, I landed in 2013 and I didn't really come home until 15. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that injury of not having somebody take care of you when they should have. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, watching your people you love have to get something that's right, that has to fight for something that's rightfully theirs. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, brother, thank you. And I'm sorry that that happened to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm just sorry, bro. Now, what do you think about this? But, uh, what is their name? Um, it's bigger. You know, it's individual. So it's personal. It is personal, but it's bigger than that because it reflects a history of uh, disregard, of yeah. dehumanization, yeah. of uh, the sense of devaluing yeah. our existence and our humanity and yeah. being able to walk away like it didn't mean anything. Yeah. What do we do about that? I think... Um, I think when you said, I know who I am and whose I am, mm -hmm. the core of your humanity, they couldn't take from you. I often tell a story about having a spanking brand new $20 bill and asking an audience, you know, how much is this worth? Anybody want that? And everybody said, yeah, give me that $20. And then I'll take it and I'll crumble it. And I'll tear it and I'll put it on the ground and I'll put my foot on it and get it dirty. And, and then I'll pick it up again and I said, how much is this worth? Still $20. So what we go through affects the way we are, but it doesn't affect who we are. And so when I heard that, I thought about the transgenerational struggles that we as women mm -hmm. carry in centuries mm -hmm. on our backs, being told we are worthless because of our black bodies that were stolen from us. When I hear what you say, I think about then, but I also think about now. Mm -hmm. And a little black boy right now, seven years old, in the second grade, reading at a fifth grade level. But he's been traumatized because he's in foster care. He lost his mama, she didn't say bye. And he acts up in school. And so now they're putting him in what we call a District 287. Kids gonna be on lockdown go through mail detectors to get into the school, preparing them for jail. Mm -hmm. Like they tried to do with you. Mm -hmm. So while your message is sad, it's also a tale of resilience yes. and a spirit that doesn't know how to die mm -hmm. because you know who's you are. Mm. So to me, what we're talking about here 
It's even how when slaves tried to want to run away, they diagnosed it as drapetomania, yeah. a mental disorder, because you want to abscond from service. There is a concept called mental side. Mental side is, we know about homicide, suicide, but mental side is when you kill off the humanity of another human being mm. so that you don't see them as a person like you. Mm. They are less than, they're, they're nothing. They're animals and they do that to us. Mm. So, brother, you are a victim of mental side by a system that has relied on the four white property rights. Because, see, there are white property rights for slaves. The, the right to dispend how they want to use you, the right to trade you, the, the right to determine how far you'll go. They continue to use those property rights on us. They do. Mm. They do. Colin Kaepernick, property. Mm. And when they've used you up, Blow. you see what I'm saying? Mm. They want to throw you away. Mm. So we're fighting from being throwaway people. That's right. Mm. We, we got to see that we're redeemable. Mm -hmm. And like that $20 bill, our value doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And nobody has the right to redefine what God made. That's right. So that's the struggle of us. Mm -hmm. For our wellness, we have to reclaim that's right. our own humanity. That's right. We have to reclaim our own bodies. And even though we're out of those shackles, we can't continue to shackle ourselves. Mm -hmm. mm. We can't continue to shackle Thank you, brother. Oh. Thank you, brother. Okay, so uh, thank, thank you all you, for bearing witness and just being here. And thank you. I, I love you, man. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I have to say that because I, 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 I do. I believe in what you're doing and what you're going to do. But the, the issue of who you are, you're a role model, you're, you're, you're a good man. And uh, I, I needed to say that. But let me go for the target here. I, and I don't know if you're going to put this in your, on this, but. Tape, tape is rolling. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, 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 you know, because I'm thinking, okay, uh, you need to create some change. You know, I need to create some change. But recently, uh, here in Minnesota, yeah, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> uh, uh, it was, it was, it was uh, you know, the Super Bowl and all that. But um, I, was, I, was, I was upset. And the reason why I was upset was because uh, I, uh, I made the mistake of uh, trying to connect with Carrie Levin hmm? to tell them about this story. And uh, you know they uh, they uh, asked for more information, and I gave them more information. They had more you know documentation, you know, and it's like. I'm telling you this damn story because this is my story. Right. Uh, but they wouldn't accept it. That's right. They wouldn't accept it. And I'm like, you're talking about institutional racism. Yeah, absolutely. Staring me in the face. Right. Carrie Levin. Yeah. And I said, you know what? This, this is, I'm going to call him out. Mm -hmm. I am Colonel Rab, even though I'm retired. That's right. But I'm going to call you out, Carrie Levin. This was a no-go in my book, That's right. all right? That's right? This was a no-go. Right. I shared what I shared with you all, but I shared it to a wider community mm -hmm. that didn't understand. That's right. And they're telling me, well, they didn't anything. see anything That's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Well, let's back to what you said, Dr. V. Your reality, our reality That's has right. no consequence, no value. Yeah. Uh, the brown body, the black right. body, the right, black body. Uh, has no value, and it's easy for them to ignore it and walk away. Yeah. And so I tell people when you know they ask me about uh, whether we can get things in the, I'll call it the white press, mm -hmm. uh, don't expect it. That's right. Because no. uh, you can't expect them 
to tell a truth that will belie mm -hmm. right. the falsity of their own existence. Exactly. That will reveal That's right. that their existence is the underpinning of a conspiracy yeah. to control that's right. the black body, exactly right. right? Yeah. So that's what I say. But you know, I think that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. That's exactly right. And so what you have done is exactly the right thing, and it's right to call them out yeah. and to say the truth that you yeah. have to My say. Truth. And yes. we have to develop courage to do yes, that. Exactly right. And so, Doc, I want to you know just talk about where we go as a community. Where do we go? How do we? Uh, as I believe we're mustering the courage. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the uh, Black Panther movie yet or not. Oh, yes. I have not, right I've just been hearing about it. Right here. But I, I wanna talk about <laughs> that <forever. laughs> in the context of this conversation. Right. Because I think where we're going is an understanding of who we tru yeah. truly are. Yeah. Yeah. That we yeah. are moving beyond the smoke and the mirrors That's right. and the deception yes. and the lie to discover yeah. our native and natural fundamental genius as reality yeah. number one. Yeah. And if yeah. excellence is the base, the bottom line, mm. where do we go from there? Exactly. And I tell you, we are launching. Yeah. Excellence isn't enough. Yeah. It's a start. What do you think? So can, can I jump yeah, in? Jump so in, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, right? <laughs> so, so I've collected comic books ever since I was a, a kid, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I've collected uh, uh, Black Panther and uh, X-Men. A lot of people don't know is that uh, Marvel in the 60s, when they started, couldn't necessarily talk about race directly. So they changed and made uh, mutants you know, uh, were uh, kind of a, a substitute for black folks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And and if you if you know, like in the X Men comic books, uh, Professor Xavier was actually modeled after uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. He always talks about having a dream that one day mutants and 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 humans will get together. Yeah. And Magneto was m actually uh, shaped after uh, 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 Malcolm X because mm -hmm. he was like, let's stay away from him. You know that type of stuff. So, so, so I'm a big nerd, and one of the things that I love about the Black Panther movie, movie is that it it is built on this um, very long history that started, I believe, with Sun Ra of uh, Afrofuturism, right? Mm -hmm. And that's thinking about black people in the future aside from white supremacy, mm. that we don't start there, that we, that we dream and talk about mm. and create a reality that is not based on the white body being the supreme standard by which all other humanity, all other bodies' humanity shall be measured, That's right? right. That is the underlying ethic of this country, that the white body is the supreme standard yeah. by which all humanity and all other humanity's bodies shall be measured. And everything that's not white is a deviant mm. from that yeah. measurement, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what Wakanda represents for me, I mean, it is a reason why this movie in less than two weeks is getting ready to hit a billion dollars. Mm. That's right, mm. that's right. Because it then tapped into this kind of understanding uh, uh, in black people and in people of color that our measurement does not have to be white folks. Mm. And when you're watching this movie on the screen, mm. you cannot help but feel good about being a black man or a mm. black woman. Right. It's like you're watching the, the colonel of the Wakandan army is a black female. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A bad black female, mm. right? Mm -hmm. She the one that he take on a mission with her to have his back, That's right? Mm -hmm. right? And, and, the, and, and the way that you watch these actors mm. do their work, and then when you watch interviews after it, they love each other. When you, that's why, that's, that's what struck a chord in this, mm -hmm. is that you're watching them mm -hmm. love each mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. and talk and be with each other in ways that you go, that's how I am with my auntie. That's how I am with my brother. Mm -hmm. That's how I am you with my sister. Mm -hmm. You recognize it. And, that, and, and the idea of this, of, of black people having something so visual and so affirming up on the screen that is, see the whole thing about Wakanda is that when colonialism happened, the thing is that Wakanda, because it had vibranium, was able to shield itself from the rest of the colonial. So it has been untouched mm. by colonialism. That's, right. mm. That's what the whole thing is about. Right. And so it is a beacon 
to uh, how black people could dream mm. without, without the effects of white body supremacy, without the effects of the standardization of the white body. That's right. mm. And so, man, so I, like I said, I'm a nerd, Ooh. and this movie, <laughs> it, this movie <laughs> is yeah. beautiful. That's so right. that's all I want to say. Wow. Doc, I, got, I got one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so where do we go from here? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, guess we, yeah, I think where we, we, we have yeah. to go is to recognize just what you're saying, mm -hmm. our value aside from what other, name, other people have named us. Mm -hmm. To claim our original name, the name of Victor, mm -hmm. the name of survivor, That's the right. name of thriver, right. the mm -hmm. name of creator, mm -hmm. That's right. the name of overcomer, yeah. right. the name of making it work again. That's, right. That's who we are. That's right. mm -hmm. and, and because of that, the way we do it is we have to do cognitive reframing. Oh, we sure. gotta change our mind. Yeah, change our mind about lean in one way, saying beautiful means blonde and blue Blood, eyes yeah. that I'll never have. That's right. Mm -hmm. We gotta change our mind about what is intelligence. That's right. Because my intelligence helps me create a way when I don't have money to buy groceries. That's right. I still eat, my That's family right. still eat. That's right. We have to change our way of looking, our minds, about looking at what is apparent yeah. and what what is a family? Mm -hmm. What is a black man? What is a black woman? Yes, right. We have to change our minds mm -hmm. to begin to see mm -hmm. the reality of what we have always been. That's right. We well, change our minds. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, brother. And I encourage so these. Love you, brother. That was beautiful. Thank you for the power you shared. We gotta change, change our minds. Can't be like it used to be all the time Whether you're brown or black or white Change's gonna come one day Just like the Black Panthers say <laughs> Give me a little bit of that vibranium <laughs> I make all the devils go away <laughs> Change, 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 change Change is gonna come. We've been singing that for so long. But we're gonna sing it one more time again. We've gotta change our mind. Awesome. Thank you. Check out our new website at insightnews.com. I'm just a cowboy, I'm gonna come into your town Every time I see you, you make my heart go wild Every time you kiss me, you make me want to smile It's alright, it's okay, I wanna be that special lover today Wanna be your cowboy, please 